Thank you. Can you hear me? Oh, thanks. I'm sorry I'm a bit ill, so it's not my normal voice, but I hope it's okay for now. So my name is Svetlana Isakova and I work at JetBrains. I hope you know it's a creator of several nice uh, ideas like IntelliJ and others. Actually, I am Kotlin developer of Kotlin. Last year, we finally started to write our Kotlin compiler on Kotlin and it brought so many, so much happiness and peaceful to our lives that I want to, I'll try to explain why actually during this talk. So what we're going to do today is at first, I will talk a little bit about motivation. Why did we start it at Dead Brains? To create another bicycle. Why didn't we stop it? <laughs> because now we have Java 8 and uh, Swift and many other nice languages. Uh, why we hope that, uh, why we see power in our product, in our language. Then I'll show you uh, a mix of Kotlin basics together with Android examples. I'll try to show you Kotlin through Android somehow. So what is Kotlin? Kotlin is a modern language for industry. Better. What do I mean by industry? What is Java good for? Java is a very powerful language. We use it enormously in this world. It's really a good choice for big teams in big companies and big projects. When you have lots of code, lots of lines of code, and uh, uh, there is an interesting question. What uh, a typical programmer, a typical developer in such a circumstances uh, does more often? What is his, like, uh, what, do, what does he spend most of his time? And uh, I suppose that the answer is reading the code, reading the existing code base, trying to find the exact place when you have to add something, fix something, etc. So uh, it's an <laughs> there is an interesting question whether uh, we can have a language that is uh, to some extent more readable than Java. So on the one hand side, we want to have uh, the, uh, the power of Java, but on the other hand side, we know that Java is too verbose in some extent in many, actually in many places and many things, and we would like to improve it. And uh, I want to show you some examples. So again, our goal as language designers is to create a, uh, a language where code, th where the code contains enough information for us as the readers, but not more. Okay, examples. Uh, there is this. Uh, uh, typical example, but it's an example from Java 1.4, but I think it illustrates what I'm trying to uh, to explain very good. So it's uh, it's just a loop, a simple loop. But uh, in Java 1.4, we had to uh, create all these iterators, think, and uh, it's not it's not a big deal. It's not a very complicated feature. But when you read it, it turns out that the second example, that's how we see it in Java 1.5, uh, in through since Java 1.5 in and in all these modern languages, the second example is just easier to catch. So you just spend less time understanding what's going on here. Uh, Okay, that was Java 1.4, but maybe now Java is cool enough for us. But there is a task that, that sometimes I have to implement. Sometimes, yes, I need to iterate over collection with index. And uh, in Java, I don't, I don't know uh, a very nice way to do it. I especially Google, before every talk, I Google how I should do it in Java 8. And uh, there is no easy way either. They have some uh, iterators, etc., but it's not easy. It's not li like just one line that it's very clear. So uh, the second example is, you, you see it, it's Kotlin code, but you understand it just immediately, I suppose. It's just iterating of a collection with indexes. Okay, then another example. <laughs> this one is the classical example from some introduction to Scala or something talks when uh, they show you this Java class and ask, what does this class do? And uh, you answer, nothing. It just stores the data. Why we should write so many lines? Actually, I hope you do not, you do not write this code by hand. You just generate it. 
Uh, but anyway, when you read this code, trying to understand what's going on, you, ha you have to, to uh, cope somehow with this verbosity. So in all these modern languages, not just Kotlin, but any new language shows you and, and uh, says like, look how easy it can be. It is the same pattern, but it's much more concise and uh, usable and readable. I hope that was enough for examples to illustrate this first idea what, that we would like to have a modern language. Uh, not Java, but some, something that is more concise and more expressive. That on the one hand side uh, doesn't, uh, ha doesn't have so, ma so many boilerplate, but on the other hand is expressive enough to allow, allow us to, uh, to extract th more things into libraries, not to duplicate our code, etc. And uh, this is what all these modern JVM languages, and so not only JVM languages, but all these modern languages have in common. They are concise and expressive, comparing to the, uh, the old ones, the old ones. Okay, so uh, when we started the Kotlin project, uh, there was uh, this uh, requirement to write our code in a more modern language. And uh, there's an interesting question, what options did we have? It was like three years ago. And uh, uh, there were a lot of, so uh, most of the JetBrains, pro one of the goals uh, of JetBrains to create a new language was to use it for internal products. And um, most of the internal products are written in Java. So IntelliJ is written in Java. And there was different objects, like uh, we, could use Groovy, but it is dynamically typed language. Now it's, it's moving to static typing. It uh, suggests you to use static type annotations and so on. But at that time, it was mostly dyna dynamically typed language. And, um, but uh, for, for uh, good tooling and uh, for safety reasons, we would like to have statically typed language and uh, of course for performance issues. Okay, but then there was only one candidate at the time, uh, the language, the JVM language that was statically typed, uh, except Java. Who knows? Yes, obviously. But uh, with Scala, it is difficult to add Scala to existing Java project because Scala creates its own infrastructure. So it's a good language if you want to create your new project from scratch, you don't need to interrupt a lot with your existing Java code. So it's rather difficult to continue write IntelliJ on Scala, to add new Scala. So you can, for example, in JetBrains, Scala plugin is written on Scala, but it's like a separate component. If you want to add uh, a lot of new language in the existing code, it's, it might be painful. So this was one of the important requirements for us, to be compatible with Java. I'll explain it a bit more a bit later. Okay, so about safety. We would like to have uh, fewer errors. Now we know how to, we, I mean, the world knows <laughs> how to eliminate some types of errors. For example, oh, sorry. For example, I forgot that I have this thing. <laughs> now I remember it <laughs> in the middle of the presentation, but anyway. Uh, now, uh, f what do I mean by this? Uh, to eliminate some types of errors. We would like to convert runtime errors into compile time errors. The, b the best, the most uh, well-known example is the example with nullable references when uh, almost every new modern language has its own approach. It says, okay, we know how to cope with nullability. There are different solutions like option types, like nullable types, and so on. But uh, we all know that, okay, we can cope with it now. There are, in Java, there are other issues like, uh, for example, in Java, you have mutable uh, collections by default, and uh, uh, you can't guarantee it's, re it's not immutability, but you can't guarantee that it should, shouldn't be mutated outside in compile time if you use standard Java collections. So y if your peer returns collections, you can't guarantee that the user won't change it. And it's just, it's, Java has to be backward compatible, so you can't just change it. Uh, code will be broken. So it's like, may maybe it should be designed differently from the start, but now every everyone lives with it and that's all. 
Okay, so uh, then goes my favorite table when Kotlin has uh, all the pluses but no other JVM language has. Uh, so when we compare these JVM languages, so we are on the JVM side, so we are interested only in Java world, and we compare uh, these modern JVM languages with each other. And uh, we see this difference that, for example, Scala and Ceylon, they uh, want to improve the whole world. Just say, okay, we want to rewrite all the libraries. We want to redo everything, make everything. We know that in Java it's not very good, it's not correctly from the start, so we want to remake it. But what they gain? They gain beautiful libraries, everything is, uh, is, more, is more nice and so on. But uh, on the other hand, Scala can't, can't be easily, uh, you, you lose this Java interoperability. When I to talk about Java interoperability, I mostly mean that uh, if this language, this new language can be easily used from Java, because there is, there is no problem to invoke Java code from this, from any of these languages. But when we talk about vice versa, for example, now uh, when, when we code our Kotlin compiler, it is, uh, it's written on both languages, on Java and on Kotlin, and we didn't rewrite it. We just, from one point, we start to use Kotlin. And when I think I have to create a new class, I can easily create it on Kotlin and then use it from Java code easily. So uh, one of, and it is, uh, it's not just it, it, it happens. It was one of our important requirements. So there is the difference. <coughs> okay, so uh, in conclusion of this introduction part, Kotlin tries to be smart to avoid boilerplate, tries to be expressive to let you avoid repetition and extract into, into libraries, and tries to be as safe as possible to eliminate many types of errors. Okay, so what's wrong, actually? <laughs> why everyone doesn't use Kotlin just now and why it's not the like, Kotlin conference? And the question is, when Kotlin 1.0? <laughs> when? <laughs> because we haven't released yet. Uh, for now, the state is that we are almost there. But you know this, uh, 80 and 20 percent of <laughs> readiness and time. So uh, I think um, from some from ta some time ago, we were w when we started to use Kotlin in our uh, for Kotlin compiler, it works. Okay, there are some places uh, that uh, there are some bugs and places when we have to use some workarounds. But basically, uh, our team is working both on compiler and plugin, so you have good idea support. From, from scratch. Okay, so then I should uh, behave like a Hollywood movie teaser, something like this summer. <laughs> okay, it's just it's a secret information, don't take it seriously. <laughs> okay, now we are going to demo. And uh, I will use Android Studio. Maybe you have any questions. You can ask something very quickly if you want. No, okay. Uh, if you change your mind, don't hesitate, and you can ask. <coughs> okay, and uh, what I want to show in the first place, I want to show you how easy it is to start using Kotlin and Android Studio. So I want to create a new project and uh, show how uh, to set up Kotlin in it. So I create a new project. Now I think I have to... Um, press enters for several times. Actually, my Android Studio, uh, the only difference is that it contains Kotlin plugin. So I installed Kotlin plugin beforehand, and uh, uh, now after it I can configure Kotlin projects. So, oh, some error occurred, okay. I think we'll ignore it for now, <coughs> maybe. Oh yes, it's, it's, it, everything is okay, it's resolved. So what I, do at first I want to change this uh, view to project, it's more convenient for me. Uh, then what I do, uh, this uh, Android Studio created default activity in Java for me. But what I can do is to convert, convert Java file to Kotlin file. This is a very nice feature because when you try to, write, try to code in Kotlin and you don't know s how to write something, you can always write it in Java, then convert it. <laughs> it, it 
actually, it does. So the converter should be improved actually more because now uh, you get something like Java-like code. But anyway, it's better than nothing. It, it, it's very convenient. Okay. Uh, then the, a bit of magic. I think uh, very soon we'll um, uh, change this magic. But uh, what I do now, I add a Kotlin source directory. Uh, you'll understand why very soon. Then I have to say that I want to configure Kotlin in pro in project. Yes, enter. And uh, the the my very important thing is that you don't you need to know nothing about Gradle whatsoever. You don't need to know how to uh, how to add these things, but it's it's all done autom automatically. And um, if you like, it it adds some dependencies. Um, in plugin. So I think, uh, yes, I said s uh, synchronize. And uh, the last thing uh, I need to do is to move my Kotlin activity class into Kotlin uh, source, uh, source folder. I think this one will, ch will uh, fix soon. But anyway, uh, just from this moment, you can uh, try to code in Kotlin in your project. Okay, somehow it synchronizes. Okay, I think uh, we'll... Any questions? The dependencies. Kotlin plugin? Apply plugin? Bottom, Bottom yes, we have some dependencies for Kotlin. It, add, it uh, added. I can uh, show you the real difference, uh, but I think it's better to show you it after the talk. <laughs> From Git history. Uh, okay, so uh, now I have created, I have prepared this project for you. So now we are moving to uh, examples part. Uh, Kotlin basics through Android examples. The first one is uh, like classical examples. I really liked uh, yesterday in a groovy talk that um, there there was the same example with button and set and click listener. So it's. Uh, <laughs> it's so important <laughs> for Java developers to have lambdas. I think uh, most of you, uh, I suppose most of you know about lambdas already. Who knows? Who have heard about it? Oh, that's, <laughs> that's all of you. So it's like uh, no uh, no surprise that you can just set on click listener. And uh, what's important here, we do not add any our library methods. Uh, this is Java standard method set and click listener, but we generate uh, um, we generate additional method to th that uh, that then uh, trans that then invokes this one. Uh, so if uh, Java class invokes uh, like s a same interface, so some interface with only one abstract method, then you can uh, use lambda as an argument. I think it's clear. So now what I want to do is something like make toast. Uh, oh, I wanted to show you uh, my best of Android. I think you will laugh at me. But <laughs> anyway, uh, what is our uh, goal is something like uh, this one. Yes. So like click me and that's all. But uh, we'll try to learn some Kotlin basics through this example today. Okay, so uh, a, bi a bit about lambdas. Uh, in uh, I'll show you syntax. I think you should be it should be very easy for you. So, uh, what is lambda? Lambda is a function that you can store in a value. So it's a, this uh, sum has function type. I can specify type explicitly and has and that's how it looks in Kotlin. In Kotlin, so it's a variable of function type that takes two int arguments and return int as a result. And we can invoke it uh, with int integer arguments, and uh, uh, we, c we can uh, uh, use it uh, everywhere that uh, wants function functional type. So this one example is the function that applies that, uh, ha that has two arguments and uh, invokes uh, the function on the first argument. What is interesting here is we ha it's important here. We'll use it later. Uh, there is a Kotlin convention that uh, if lambda is uh, the last argument of some function invocation, we can 
uh, move lambda expression out of parentheses and uh, put this, the curly braces outside these round braces. So it's the same syntax. It's like syntactic sugar. But it turns out it's very useful to create your decay like syntax. So very often it looks nicely. OK, so you, you should remember this convention. We'll use it later. I think it's not very difficult. OK, uh, then nullable types. Any questions? I think every, everything sh Who uh, thinks that everything is too simple? OK, <laughs> some of you. Uh, we'll move on. Uh, don't worry. Uh, at uh, the, I think I have time. I'll have time. At the end of the talk, I'll show you, I think, the most difficult uh, feature in Kotlin. So <laughs> just take your time. So uh, what if I, mm, ah, in Kotlin, we have not null types and nullable types. It's our solution for NPA problem. So we would like to avoid NPA, uh, and uh, we would like to know whether this expression of the, of the type can store null or not. Um, so now we, uh, if we put question mark after the type name, it means it this is a type that can store null reference. And uh, now you see that com uh, that um, compiler disagrees with us and uh, says that this code doesn't compile. Uh, we'll uh, talk a bit about nullability. So we have these two types of types. Uh, string means that you can't store null, and each string question mark means you can. Very important thing is that uh, how it's implemented. It's implemented with annotations. So there is no overhead. It's very crucial for Android, I think, f comparing, for example, to Scala approach, which is option types, and option types is a wrapper for your reference. Now, these nullable types are not wrappers. They are just uh, Java, in this case, they are just Java length string types with different annotations. So here, the signature from bytecode is the same. So for, for Java, it's just string. But Kotlin compiler understands annotations and uh, compiles against it. So there is no performance overhead with these nullability things. Uh, so what can we do with, um, uh, what can we do with, uh, uh, this variable, uh, first of all, we can, uh, ah, we, we can, uh, dereference, uh, as a D as one, but we can't do the same with this second because, uh, uh, because it can store null. So a compiler forbids you to dereference this directly. It requires you to check it explicitly. F what can you do? F for example, you can check if it's not null, like in Java, and uh, in this in in this case, reference it. But uh, Kotlin compiler knows better ways. For example, it suggests you to replace it with safe access expression, and uh, it's the same. So uh, this safe access means that if it's nullable, then do what's what's going next. If it's not null, then don't. I think this feature was, this thing and syntax was stolen for, from Groovy. Actually, Kotlin, uh, I think there, maybe there is only one thing that that is initially Kotlin thing. Most of the things was stolen from many different languages. So uh, if you try to learn Kotlin, then you'll show very, I don't know, the, the, you'll most probably know all the features already if you just have some basic understanding of, of how it works. Uh, <coughs> okay, what is the type of the first expressions? Of the first expression, it's uh, int. Uh, this int is, um, in bytecode, is Java primitive. Int, int question mark, in bytecode, to make it simple, is, is, a da is Java lang integer. So uh, what is the type of this expression? Int, int or qu int with question mark. There was two of. Who votes for int? Who votes for int question mark? Oh, you're right. Yes, <laughs> you're here. That's really nice of you. <laughs> okay. Uh, so actually, uh, if I want to have a default value here, I can write something like this. And in this case, the result type will be int, and it means that if the expression is null, then return this zero as a default value. Okay, uh, Kotlin uh, static analysis 
of nullability is smart enough, so you can write something like check as dva for null if, if it's null return. And in this case, as Kotlin compiler understand th understands that you can uh, you can dereference as two. In Kotlin, we have uh, these smart cast casts. That means that if you checked a type, uh, a variable for some type, then you can use it uh, as having this type. It can be very convenient for Mm, in Java, there is sometimes this code like instance if uh, if something uh, is something then and so on. So in Kotlin, it's just a bit easier and uh, again no boilerplate in this in this point. And uh, uh, who was yesterday in Swift presentation? Maybe some of you. Are okay, quite a lot. So you know that in Swift they have uh, one exclamation mark to show you that. Uh, to, to throw null pointer exception. In Kotlin, you have two of them. <laughs> just <laughs> to, to prevent you to u f of using it. Uh, just to say, no, no, please don't, don't use uh, these question marks. And the, the exclamation marks, and that means that if you really want to throw in here and you are sure of your doing, you can do it. And uh, what is our story with Java interop? A, a small digression. At first, we thought that we would like to improve Java code as well. We wanted to annotate all Java code, all, ex all your existing Java code with external annotations, and uh, for every Java functions, tell which argument is nullable and which return type is not null. Oh, and no, nullable or not null and so on. But it turns out it didn't work very well, because uh, it's very inconvenient and if you try to uh, to cope with Java, with an annotated Java, everything was nullable by default because Kotlin compiler wanted to prevent you. So you had to uh, put these exclamation marks everywhere and it, looks t it looked terrible. So now our approach is to, if you have uh, types from Java, you can decide by your, s by, by your own if it's nullable or not null. So you can put question mark or use it, dereference it without, it's on your responsibility, it's your own responsibility. If your Java code is annotated with special annotations, then Kotlin compiler understand, understands it, sees it, and generates warning, warnings, but not errors. So it's like an example, uh, comparing, uh, returning to Scala and um, Ceylon, uh, we wanted to improve Java world, but we failed a bit. <laughs> So now uh, the approach is that in pure Kotlin code, you will be, mm, uh, you won't have this null pointer exceptions because compiler prevents you from it because you, 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 you can lots of smart features to eliminate the possibility. But uh, if you use Java code, then as, as, you, you, as it used to be. But we have easy interrupt. Okay, returning to our activity, here is very simple. Now I know what I can do. I can put question mark here. And uh, one more digression, if th this thing, what, what it, uh, it does for me, if uh, this button wasn't, find, wasn't found, then uh, there is null as a result. But if this find view by D found not button, this code will throw class cast exception. Uh, if I want to, uh, guard against it, I can use like save as, and that means if this expression is, is not of type button, then mm, return null as a result. I think it should be <laughs> clear, I hope. Okay, let's move on. And uh, mm, as you remember, uh, in my example, I had another button. For now, I have only one button, but I secretly will add another button here and uh, then I want to uh, have the same listener on the on the one second button okay let's uh, let's consider it's not nullable for uh, easiness now <coughs> and um, what I do now is I have this second button and what uh, for now I would like to say the same listener on it so what I do at first like I copy paste the code and then I said add me but and me button set on click listener. Uh, and then I look at this code and uh, think so terrible <laughs> copy paste. <laughs> I, it's no I shouldn't uh, show it to anybody. I should 
do something uh, with it. What options do I have? At first, I can, for example, extract this. Uh, but basically, it's the same options as in Java. For example, I can extract this listener, and uh, idea suggests me to extract this from the both from the both places. I have this uh, listener and set and click, but I think it's it can be a bit erroneous approach because it's not a good idea to set the same listener to buttons. If you want to change it later, it may be not, not for good. Uh, okay, then uh, what I can do, I can create a function that uh, has a button as argument and says on click listener. And, um, but what uh, for me is uh, the best way to do it is to uh, create an extension function. Digression to extensions. Uh, I think it's, it was initially stolen from C Sharp. Who knows C Sharp here? So it's extensions. <laughs> Your favorite extension functions. Uh, for all of others, we uh, can extend existing Java class. So here it's Java length string. Nothing, nothing special. We do not reinvent all the libraries. We use Java libraries, so it's Java string. And uh, we can extend this Java existing Java string with uh, new smart methods. I think most of you have something like that in your project, like string utils and tons of methods there. There. Uh, so actually, it's like the same. So it's the syntax. You can extend string with this extension function. Then it's very useful because now it's visible in completion. If you're a day user, so okay, uh, say last char. And uh, if I use smart completion, who uses smart completion? Smart completion. Okay, for those who do, who 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 surprisingly use, for example, Android Studio does know it's with shift and it filter your options with the context. So now it knows that char is expected, so it filter out my only choice. And um, it turns out that that is very useful to have uh, lots of util functions like extensions because it's easier to find them and so on. And uh, the code is more readable in this case. Okay, but uh, what about Java compatibility? How do I see this code in Java? Uh, where is it? Yes. Extensions from Java. From Java point of view, it's just usual static method in a class util package. Actually, for uh, the name of my package with string was util, and uh, it creates a package or it's a create a it creates a class with pa package prefix and put all these methods into it. And extension functions transform to has uh, has this receiver as a first argument there. So in Java, it's like your usual static method from a tool class, no surprise. But in Kotlin, it's much more concise and readable, and whatever. Yes? No. Again, uh, I, has, I have a class, this, this util package is a class, and it has a method, last char, like usual util static method. And it has string as an argument. But because it was declared as extension from Kotlin point of view, you can use it on a, with an extension receiver. So actually, we can't change string class. It's impossible for us. We are just a language compiler. We can't change the whole thing. But we can uh, make this place more uh, beautiful for us as Kotlin programmers. So yes, it's just static method. OK, uh, so uh, what I wanted to show you now, I think I will cheat a bit and um, uh, have this. Uh, <coughs> okay, does matter. So uh, I can uh, declare uh, these extension functions on uh, on class button and uh, said here show toast uh, toast on click. And um, here I wanted to show you one more Kotlin feature that is quite nice. That is default. Uh, parameters and arguments. I think I think it should be clear for you now that it's just two buttons. We added these extension functions. Again, in Java, it's almost the same. You can declare the function with the button as an argument, but in Kotlin, uh, the whole point is readability. The whole point is that when you look at these extension functions, it it's easier to understand what's going on. It looks nicer. Okay, these default arguments, you can... Uh, you can create default value for your argument and um, uh, use it as 
uh, and uh, invoke this function without this argument. Uh, small example here. Yes, well, it's like from Kotlin. Kot uh, sm small Kotlin example. The here I have this. Uh, three arguments, and uh, I, I can use. Uh, I can uh, actually I can use all arguments with its name, and um, I mean, I, and I can omit those arguments who has default default values for parameters. I think it should be easy for you. Uh, okay, so I'll. Uh, I think I uh, ended with this example. So if you have more questions, or okay. First, I would like to congratulate you and JetBrains for developing ah, so many I'm sorry. beautiful <laughs> products. And, but uh, my question is uh, that, uh, as far as I know, uh, Kotlin does not support annotation yet. Do yes, it's it's uh, like uh, the weighted question. Um, um, does I mean yes about annotations? Uh, it's like on our priority list. We know that. Um, I'm sorry. I meant that I I'm I've do, I've done with the, this example, and uh, I waited uh, may, maybe questions about this syntax. Actually, I want to show you uh, a bit more magic about Kotlin. So maybe we'll um, put the I'll answer on these annotations questions, and then uh, show you some more examples and then questions. Um, so annotations processing it's on it's on our priority list. Like we know that uh, Android developers need it. Uh, because of these frameworks and uh, everything, but uh, we cannot say when we finish it because it's a big task. But uh, we know, and uh, we want to, to to implement it. Okay, so sorry, I have a question also. Yes, uh, question. Okay, um, very quickly. You define the extension function in the scope of the class, so it's yes. visible only in. That yes, in this, in this, yes, I can define extension cl extension function in the scope of the class, and as you see in this extension fu functions, I have actually two this. This is button, and uh, this one is activity. Okay, thanks. Yes, um, I have only eight minutes, but I wanted to now. I wanted to show a bit of magic. Uh, it's like in it's a plugin in alpha alpha version. So it uh, isn't published yet, uh, but now I have it from sources, but I wanted to share you what ideas do we have to improve Android Vault, something like that. So this example is the same that we viewed, that we s saw already. So, uh, but here I can improve it a bit strangely. So I can write something like this. And it works. And something like this. Without find view by D. And uh, I don't need it. Uh, yes, and actually you can see at the top of the screen, I have two import. imports. It's like two secret imports. And um, what, is what is going behind the scene? If you really want all the details, you can ask me later. I will be very happy to explain you. Now I won't go too deep into the implementation. But in, in, in short words, like uh, when I, I uh, now, uh, and uh, you, you notice that this one is button. It's button, so it has button type. And uh, generally, there is a plugin that generates uh, when you use uh, some ID, from your IDs, it generates something like find view by ID, uh, but d actually find cached view by ID. So it creates cache in activity with all these views by ID from IDs to views, and uh, it caches and you can use it in activity just by ID. That's it. So if you if you want some more details, please ask me later. But basically, it's. It's it's a plugin for it's an external plugin. So uh, this code will work only if you use this plugin. So if you open it somewhere else, it won't work obviously. But with this plugin, you can write the code like this, and uh, and that's it. it. It will generate all the implicit find view by ID things behind the scene. Okay, I have five more minutes, and uh, actually I had another example. Um, I think I can try to, I can try to show it to you. <laughs> I like this example. Um, who have heard about uh, types uh, uh, like maybe groovy builders or 
our type. So in basic, okay. So <coughs> uh, this feature is was <laughs> to some extent stolen from Groovy, <laughs> but in Groovy they have uh, like dynamically type builders. Builders I is like a way to uh, to build your objects. Nice way to build something. And in Groovy they don't have static static typing on, on it, but in Kotlin we ha we have it. So uh, okay, I'll use. Ah, I had another application for you, yes. Uh, so uh, here the idea is that um, I want to have another simple of application of not an Android development f developer from you. I have two locations, Warsaw and St. Petersburg, and uh, I want to show you time for every location. Yes, so basically I have very simple uh, fr uh, frame. I have uh, th this one is a uh, table um, table frame and um, uh, something like this. Ta uh, table layout, two tables row, table rows with text view and text clock in it, in each of it. And um, what I do here is something like I can set time zone. I have special constants to no, not to distract you. So I can set time zone for every for every view. And um, this is a simple way of me as a newbie, as an Android newbie to write this application. But then I would like to add some more locations into this, is into my table. And um, I can, I know I can use <laughs> some uh, list uh, li layouts and uh, to uh, override some special methods to achieve that. So, so what I want to do is I have a collection of locations and I would like to build it dynamically. So for example, I want to have uh, this nice location, Kotlin Island. Kotlin actually is a la an island near St. Petersburg, so its time zone is the same as in St. Petersburg, but my goal now, I want to add this location to my application. <laughs> You're from Poland, yes, we know it. <laughs> good ketchup for you, yes. Have a good ketchup. Okay, so uh, what we ha can do in, so we, we want to build this layout dyn dynamically, and in Java is a pain. It's a pain because you know you have to declare each fragment and then set up all the properties and so on. But in Kotlin we can do something like this, and that's what we call builders, type safe builders. And uh, it's it looks like a uh, it looks like your usual XML with layouts, but it's actually Kotlin code. And what's important here, table layout is an invocation of a method. And uh, do you remember what you uh, had to remember? That this one is lambda in these square brackets. And uh, this nice syntax that you have this this method and then goes lambda in, s in, uh, in square, so sorry, in curly brackets. Uh, then again, this table row is a function declared somewhere and uh, this thing is lambda, the hard works, but actually I uh, have the same layout. And uh, very quickly, I'm sorry, uh, I'll show you it and uh, we're almost done. The nice thing here that I is that I can write code in this dynamic layout. So I can write, so for example, I, I can write my four iteration loop iterate over my locations and dynamically build what I need to do, what I want to build, this table. It works. So uh, this one actually is a, ta a variable of text clock type and uh, I can set time zone here and so on. I'm sorry, I, can, I have one minute. So I have to stop here. If you have any questions about how it works, how it works the previous plugin, uh, when we want to release, why, and I don't know, any questions you can ask. Uh, I don't know if we have time for any questions now, but you, you can ask me later. Generally, that's, that's it. That's that, that was a bit about Kotlin. Thank you. <laughs> I think there's still time for really quick Q&A. Q&A. Right there. 
uh, what to okay, do. Okay, hello. I have two questions. Thank you for the presentation. Oh, where, where is? Like, oh, okay. I see. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> I'm sorry. The, the last two examples was very, uh, very great, and thank you for that. And I have two questions that uh, are, I'm the first of uh, what is the performance and uh, the resources on devices. It's very. Uh, um, I see. There's, there's, there, there's. Um, I'm sorry, I didn't uh, put it in the, the presentation. I have a strange file from one guy from Square, um, and uh, I really like his comparison because he uses this Kotlin runtime jar size and deck size for now. Actually, the thing is that we don't have our own library at all. We have we have lots of language improvements. But uh, f for now, we, we don't know whether we will need the additional library or not. Uh, so uh, these builders think is uh, is jar, but it's separate jar. If you don't want you you don't use it. So this this the sizes for Kotlin uh, Kotlin jars. Uh, I I don't know why, for example, these decks this size of. Uh, can you see it? Yes. Yes, and uh, uh, this guy, he, he's pro Kotlin, I think. Uh, he <laughs> says something like the Skull library has uh, m megabytes and Groovy and Gov. Groovy guy yesterday told me that uh, he disagrees with this and uh, actually Groovy jar is less. But uh, the Groovy problem is the dynamic side and uh, when you use it, you can't just eliminate all the dynamic support from jar, so it's bigger. F so now it's really nice. <laughs> Uh, have I answered your question? Yes, I have one more question. Okay. <laughs> uh, is the comp compiler, Kotlin compiler, uh, uses a new build system, Jack and Jill, for example? Uh, what? Uh, no, now we don't. We don't use it. Thank you. Hello. Yes. Thank you for your beautiful introduction to Kotlin. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, I have a question regarding the using uh, view IDs in the code directly. So, is it a plugin in IDEA or it's a Gradle plugin? Uh, which one? I mean, views. Uh, so. So where you directly used view of uh, IDs? This one or, or not? The previous one. It's a ah, published plugin. Uh, yeah. This one. So, where is uh, what is the question? Where is this plugin? I, is it a idea plugin or a Gradle plugin? Uh, I think no, it's a idea plugin. Yes, so it's a plugin. it won't work on CI or something. It won't compile. Uh, I suppose no. But uh, the thing is, it it, it was started uh, like a student project, and now it's in alpha stage. So, if there will be some interest, th it can be done. So it. it the, si the thing is, it's not really big magic over there. It's not a very complicated task. So you, you generate just this code, find view by ID, and that's all. So it's not a very complicated thing. For now, it's just IntelliJ plugin, and uh, that's all. OK, thank you. And we haven't yeah, published we have it yet. But yeah. time for one more, I one. think. OK. OK, so my question is about testing, because you said something about annotation. And if I write uh, JUnit tests, I use annotations tests. Yes. So how can uh, I write tests in Kotlin? If, if I uh, rightly understood the question, it was not a question about uh, whether we do have annotations in Kotlin or not, but uh, about annotation processing. So it's like you can annotate uh, Java code, and uh, while uh, some stage through compiler, it can change your Java code into something else. And this thing is not supported, Ma mainly because in Kotlin uh, you have a Sonos language that you don't really need it, except you are like Android developer and you used to have all the, your favorite libraries that do your annotation processing. We have annotations and you can use it and we have unit testing and s everything else. So th this one works. Okay, thanks. Thank thanks. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Thank you.